strive to enter through the narrow gate. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm very grateful that the Lord Jesus described the gate as narrow and not low. <laughs> because Father Mark Davis just said in the narthex, he's taller than I am with my miter. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't strive to enter through the low gate. But he did mean what he said when he told us, strive to enter through the narrow gate. Now, this word for some people might be a little challenging. It might be a bit off-putting. It might be that folks hear that word and they say, oh boy, that's a little bit too much for me. But that's what people said in Jesus' time when they walked away. So today, the church throughout the whole world focuses on this simple phrase and tries with all her members to understand deeply just what Jesus means by this. He says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. It's interesting that the word strive, now this is not a biblical lesson, but in Greek, the word for strive is agonizomai. Do you hear another word in that? Agonizomai. We hear agony, don't we, in English. So this word that Jesus gives us today really means strive, struggle, work hard, do everything you can, do your best to get in through the narrow gate. Now, what is that narrow gate? In another place in scripture, we know Jesus describes himself. I am the sheep gate. He is the gate. So when we hear this person challenge Jesus and ask that age-old question, well, will only a few people be saved? That question's been asked from that moment until this morning on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and blogs. Well, who's going to be saved? So Bishop Robert Barron, in his reflection, quotes the Council of Trent, and he says when we hear this, we have to be very careful of not giving in to one or the other of two extremes. So the first extreme would simply be despair. Well, who can be saved? Then there's nothing I can do, so I simply give up. The other to be careful of avoiding is presumption. I presume I'm going to be saved. Have you ever met an evangelical? Maybe they come to your door or you've met them in the market. They used to come to my door even growing up. And they ask you the question, are you saved? Ever met anybody like that? Well, the answer, of course, is no. I'm redeemed. But I don't know yet if I'm saved, because I'm a humble sinner working hard to be a faithful disciple of Jesus, hoping for heaven. So it's really important that we avoid those two extremes, right? So. I presume, well, I'm a baptized Catholic, I'll go to heaven. Or, well, I'm a Christian, I'll go to heaven. Or I'm any other denomination or religion, I'll go to heaven. That's not what Jesus says here. Do we presume, God forbid? Well, I faithfully go to Mass on Sunday, but that's all I do. Am I going to heaven automatically? Jesus invites us to strive. So we know in our culture today, lots of people go to the gym, right? How many people go regularly to the gym to work out and they get a membership to the gym and they enter the gym? Now, how many people then follow up on what they should do every day? Some people sit against the wall and watch other people work out, right? 
that doesn't do anything for their health, does it? They probably could say, well, I got a membership to this gym. That's great. Well, I go to the gym every day. That's terrific. But where's the result? Are you working hard at it? That's what Jesus is inviting us to today. He knows our weakness. He knows our struggle. And notice the gospel began telling us he was on the way to Jerusalem. In his own life, he encountered the struggle, the striving, the doing everything in his power because he knew he was going to the cross, which would result in the resurrection. So today, we have a word that might be a bit unsettling because you and I know people who just automatically think, well, I'm going to heaven. How many times have we heard funeral homilies where the person lying in the aisle is canonized, right? Not so. Because we have to be striving, struggling, working hard, giving every part of our being to being the Catholics that Jesus desires us to be. So in that second reading, we hear about discipline from the writer of the Hebrews, and we're invited to be so disciplined that we don't shun struggle or difficulty or challenge. We don't shun people who disagree with us or dissent or lack of understanding, no. We approach it all with love and great fidelity so that we might eventually get to where Jesus is speaking at the close of the gospel. He says, all of those will come from different places and will recline at table in the kingdom. So every Sunday, in our striving, sinful as we are, we struggle and thank God and I'm so grateful to you and proud of you that you're here this morning. And we come to this altar each Sunday where we receive not just the strength for the struggle, but we receive the victory in the very body and blood that we receive in Jesus at communion. In this way, we're given all the power we need to stand in the struggle, to remain disciplined, to work with all our might so that we might enter through the narrow gate. Thank God, Father Davis, it's not a low gate. <laughs> but we know it is narrow. How grateful I am for the priests who have served you over this brief time, who have tried to assist the faithful members of St. Patrick's Heather Downs to enter through that narrow gate. Grateful to Father Tony Borgia for his faithful pastoral ministry and for your goodness mourning his untimely death in these months. Grateful to Monsignor Dennis Metzger for caring for you as parochial administrator. Grateful for pa Father Paul Schreiner who stepped in in such an interim, in such a key way, as a parish priest, and grateful to Father David Cherney for now coming to assist the new pastor. Isn't it true for any of us who has been a pastor, we know that it's our task as shepherd to help our flock get to heaven by the narrow gate, but each one of us knows that we ourselves struggle and strive and do all we can as shepherds to stand in the person of Jesus, to serve faithfully, humbly, selflessly, and generously. So Father Davis, as you are formally installed, that's my prayer for you and for your people. I pray that you will be a faithful, humble, generous, hard-working shepherd. And dear people, I pray that you will pray for him so that he may be just that for you. Strive to enter.
through the narrow gate because the gate is Jesus himself.